world's weirdest restaurants takes you to the Ukraine to meet a modern day Noah at a restaurant that's sure to float your boat. Now that is weirdness of biblical proportions. <laughs> then we arrive in Arizona for some knockout food. We're done sweating, now we're gonna go we're gonna eat. Go eat. That is the unanimous decision. Then we travel to Thailand for an elemental event. This feels a little bit creepy. It's like a scary mass of blackness. <laughs> and two step to Texas for bull riding and burgers. Well, we sell dead cow. When they say everything's bigger in Texas, I think this is what they're talking about. Yeah! <laughs> Ever since they built this arc-shaped restaurant called Kovchek here in the Ukrainian city of Ternopil, people have been flooding to it in droves. And as you might expect, tables for two are in high demand. Now that is weirdness of biblical proportions. The food at the Ark comes from our own organic farm. And just like Noah, Mikhail's Ark is home to more than its fair share of four-legged creatures. But something tells me Noah's family never ate quite like this. I'd like to try the soup surprise salad, the potato skins, and the assorted grill. The thing is weird in this restaurant is the shape of the restaurant. The construction of the Ark is really fascinating. Check out this beautiful wooden bow of the Ark. As it snakes up, you can see that it's actually doubling as a ventilation shaft. Wow! Look at these old rough-hewn beams and the way they're lashed together. It really makes you feel like you're in the hold of an ancient ship. Everything on the Ark is about the handmade and the homemade. And that's reflected in the architecture as well as the food. Oh, this is brilliant. This whole head of cabbage is hollowed out. The soup's in here topped with a dollop of sour cream. Generous bits of cabbage along with potatoes, carrots, and pork. In this presentation, that's thousands of years ahead of its time. Interior. This restaurant might look weird, but the food is really yummy. You gotta love this presentation. It's a, a bell pepper and tongue salad served up in a hollowed out loaf of bread. Genius. Oh, this is great. Nice crispy bell peppers, little corn kernels in there, strips of tongue all tossed together in a very light dressing. And the best part is you don't have to look far for your dinner roll. Food here is uh, organic, it's natural, and it comes from farms. Back here, you've got goats, sheep, duck. Think of it as a pre boarding area for the animals. I created the Ark because I wanted my customers to think about ecology and the environment while they eat great food. Hard to tell if this furry little creature is going to end up on the Ark or the menu. Everywhere you look on the ship, you see animals. Some of them are cast, some of them are stuffed, and some of them are live. You know what? You stop to think about it for a second. Noah had his own petting zoo. Wow, hope you guys are hungry. So we have three types of sausages, some quail sauces, a mound of sauerkraut, some lovely fried potatoes. This is definitely a Ukrainian feast. You can tell immediately that this didn't come out of some kind of sausage factory. This is farm made. Look at that, white chicken meat and cheese. Very tasty. It's almost like eating a, a chicken roll. That's lovely. It has a spicy lamb sausage. It has a really, really distinctive flavor to it. Is it just me, or does this seem like it's an awful lot of sauerkraut? Yeah. It's got a real crunch to it, mm -hmm. but the thing that distinguishes this sauerkraut from other sauerkrauts I've tasted is that there's a lot more onion. It really wakes your mouth up. Look at this chicken thigh. It's a traditional recipe from Russia. First, get in the marinade, about two or three hours, and then they are smashing with the press. Ah, so it's like a brick chicken. Yeah. For sure. This is the best food I've had in any restaurant that's also an ARC. <laughs> it's delicious. <laughs> There's no question that Noah's crew is very well dressed. I mean, take a look at some of these antique Ukrainian outfits, handmade on a loom, just like this one over here. Nice, he's going to turn me into an authentic Ukrainian with this antique shirt. Beautiful. Cossack. Cossack. <laughs> official Cossack. Now, can you teach me a couple of official Cossack dance moves? <laughs> dance moves. Put them to it. For a big guy, he's pretty limber. <laughs> and after dance moves like that, Mikhail loves a refreshing dip. Hey! <laughs> oh, oh. You're going to be stuck at sea for a whole year? 
You may as well have your own microbrewery. I made this brewery so that after the great flood, my friends and I can still party. Ah, some beer snacks. Potato skins, and this, our fish, names Karasi. Karasi. Wow, that is some crazy flavor. And you can tell from the color of this, as well as the smell and the taste, that this fish has been smoked for hours. This is a combination of raw minced garlic and salt. I mean, together, these dishes are incredibly intense, almost overwhelming. But with these beers, man, they really float my boat. The food here is fresh, it's organic, and it's really amazing. The crew on the Ark was eating and drinking this well every day. I bet they were heartbroken when the rain stopped. I feel here like I am at home. It's delicious here. With an Ark full of animals, some creatively presented dishes, and a microbrewery, it's the ultimate Ukrainian booze cruise. Check. We really enjoyed our time on the Ark, and we never got seasick. Wow, talk about being in the right place at the right time. If you like your dinner to pack a punch, then I promise you'll be floored by the Deuce Kitchen and Lounge right here in Phoenix, Arizona. This really knocks me out. The Deuce packs a one-two punch from its chefs and its trainers. Arizona's only guilt-free eatery offers fresh American classic cuisine, followed up by butt-kicking boot camp workouts. What do you think when you walked in here and you saw a restaurant, a vintage clothing store, and a boxing ring all in the same place? I thought it was brilliant. This was originally Phoenix's produce district. By day, back in the roaring 20s. By night, it was the Deuce. It was jazz clubs, illegal gambling. Everything is homemade from scratch in our trailer. Our specialties are our sliders the egg slider made with organic eggs, short rib sliders, meatball sliders, everything homemade from scratch. Nothing is pre-made. What can I get for you? I think I'll start with a baked apple pancake. That just sounds amazing. And then I'd love to try your chicken sliders. I've got to have a bag of your baked organic potato crisps. Last but not least, i got to finish it off with one of these s'more cheesecakes. Oh my goodness. This entire space is the size of a warehouse. Behind me, you've got a vintage streamlined trailer which houses the kitchen. In this tiny space, they got four burners, a grill, three ovens, and four cooks. What's it like cooking in this kitchen? Very cramped. On yeah. a busy night, how many orders would you do here? Maybe three, 400. Smack dab in the middle of the restaurant, they've got a gym where they do Steve's legendary mad dog workout. And then just over here, a full-on boxing ring. So if you had to describe this workout in one word, what would that be? That'd be torch. <laughs> Got the restaurant and the bar on this side, the Shake Shack down on this end, and behind me, an incredible collection of vintage clothes, bicycles, and kitchen kits. Baked apple pancake with real butter. You know what they say, everything's better with butter. This outer crust is like a souffle meets French toast, and the flavor is amazing. Combine that with the caramelized apples, butter, the maple syrup, this dish is a knockout. So you come here to eat or do you come here to work out? To work out, Andy. Well, we figured we could eat as much as we want and then go work it all off and we'd be fine. <laughs> Everything about this place screams vintage old school, and that translates into the food and the food presentation as well. I mean, you've got a hand crochet doily, a mason jar, and the dish itself, classic chicken pot pie. The crust is light and flaky. You get nice, generous chunks of chicken, fresh celery, carrots. It's all combined in this beautiful, creamy sauce. No question about it. This is chicken pot pie perfection. And that is a unanimous decision. OK, we're live. All Mars, blow the whistle. <laughs> touch. Two. Touch. Turn. Turn. Give me a push up. Come up swinging. You have to try. Yeah. Good job. Good job. It's become sort of a ritual for the people that are training in the ring to crawl out of the ring after a tough workout, belly up to the bar, have a beer or a cocktail, order a nutritious meal, and it's amazing. Sometimes people will line up in the seats over there and hear their dinner time entertainment. Two, man, that's a workout. Chicken sausage slider on a really crispy piece of French bread. Oh, that's just fantastic. We've got homemade chicken sausage, got some nice spice to it. It's finished off on the grill, Parmesan along with some arugula, all served up on this really crispy French bun. And lucky for me, I've got two more rounds to go. <laughs> Looks like I'm about to get humiliated in the ring for a second time. You just go like, boom. <laughs> Do 
try mine. Maybe it's my hoops easier. I think you're right. Yeah. I think that's the problem. Pro probably not. This one's off balance. Yeah. S'mores cheesecake. S'mores cheesecake. You know, I'm going to feel a little bit guilty eating this instead of all these people working out. But don't think that's going to stop me. That chocolate cheesecake is so dense and so intense. It packs a velvet punch. The graham cracker crust, so nice and buttery. And this marshmallow topping, nicely toasted. Oh, it's so luscious and gooey. But after all this, I think I'm going to have to go join these guys. I mean, it's all in the footing. I don't think it's all in the footing. I think it's all in the hips. And I think your hips beat mine <laughs> by a mile. I listen to a lot of Shakira. We're done sweating. Now we're going to go We're going to go eat. Where else can you work out in a real boxing ring, replenish yourself at a killer restaurant, and dull all your pain? Right here at the bar. If I was going to get in the boxing ring, it would have to be with someone that I know that I can beat. Bring it! Show off. <laughs> it takes a lot of elements to create a remarkable restaurant. And if Bangkok's aptly named five, those elements are water, fire, earth, spirit, and air. And when they all come together at the same time, the results can be spellbinding. Look at this place. Take a look at how the servers are dressed. They look like they've all just stepped off the set of The Matrix. I love to work here because it's life magic. The reason I create five because I'm very into the black magic, so this has become my fantasy. This feels a little bit creepy. The design here is basically witchcraft meets the industrial age. It feels like when you walk in, you feel like you walk into a movie set. This restaurant, like, I'm in the Harry Potter. <laughs> The sorcery extends to their menu. Their dishes, a fusion of Thai, Japanese, and Italian, are sinfully enticing. The food here coincides with the ambience of the restaurant. A lot of our food has a gothic feel to it. This is our signature five eclipse stew. The chef colors it with a black squid ink. It will turn your mouth black. Wow. I have never, ever seen a dish that is completely black like this. This, if you can believe it or not, is a shrimp. It's a pretty traditional stew with seafood, carrots, potatoes, a beautifully herbed sauce, but it's as though it's come out of a witch's cauldron. I had this black ink squid that totally changed my whole mouth to be black. This one's called Titan Spaghetti, named after the giant Titan squid. But in this case, the squids are quite miniature. Look at this little guy here. It's like a scary mass of blackness. But when you taste it, close your eyes, all you taste is a beautiful pasta enveloped in this beautiful creamy sauce with fiery Thai spices. This dish casts a spell on your taste buds. Just check them out. <laughs> I love the way this room is set up. You've got the bar over here, the little individual tables, and up here, these metal sculptures are actually individual private pods. You basically have to crawl through the scaffolding up here. It's like your own private skybox overlooking the entire restaurant. Hey, look at this. Incoming cocktail. The food and the drinks go with the theme black magic, so everything has got the spell. It's hard to tell if I'm in a bar or Frankenstein's basement. And here at Five, each of the elements has inspired its very own beverage. You've got the herbs for the earth, the obvious fire, the water, the watermelon, the spirits, and the air in this beautiful sailboat here. An inverted lime peel with flamey alcohol. It's really stunning. Perfect combination for a cocktail. I'm in Thailand eating fondue, a dish invented by the Swiss, comprised of mostly Italian ingredients. I want to make sure I get a bit of everything in this first bite. Fondue, the black focaccia bread, quail egg. That is as rich as a Swiss bank account. Oh, man, and delicious. It's quite a unique combination and tasty. Bone marrow, not exactly what I thought I'd be eating when they told me I was coming to Thailand. That is just so rich and sweet and intense. It's kind of like the devil's chicken liver pate. <laughs> Everywhere you look around this restaurant, there are small plaques with spells on them. This one says, banish negativity. There's even a love spell. I think you really want <gasps> this drink. Wow, look at that. Now you're supposed to fall in love with me. Don't you understand how this game works? <laughs> I see. Right. Is it working? Higgity, higgity. Hmm. I give you the mind of a frog. You know, frogs and toads are a pretty standard ingredient in any witch's potion. But here at Five, you use them when you want to call a server. 
Talk about international fusion. On first blush, this appears to be a plate of sushi. But when you look a little more closely, you realize that it's prepared from French camembert, Italian prosciutto, Russian caviar, and Japanese rice and nori. It's like the whole world has just converged on my taste buds. This is the spice me salad. Smoked salmon with Thai chili and garlic. You get the pepperiness of the rocket, the heat of the Thai spices, and the lusciousness of the smoked salmon. Spicy and kick in my mouth. And it all just comes together. This is unbelievable. It's pretty spectacular. I would love to come back. This is such a weird, freaky place. Yeah. Freaking me out. I don't know what I'm doing here. From the moment you walk into Five, the atmosphere casts a spell on you that you just wish would never be broken. There's only one restaurant in the world that's big enough for bull riders, line dancing, rodeo clowns, and a six-pound chicken fried steak. It's a little honky-tonk called Billy Bob's, and it's right here in, yeah, you guessed it, Texas. <laughs> Cowboy. If it ain't Betty Bob's, it ain't the world's largest town. 127,000 square feet, we hold 6,000 people. We do live country western rock and roll shows. We have live professional bull riding, a place to dance and come and watch some good music and have a couple of cold beers. And also, food wise, well, we sell dead cow. Our restaurant is predominantly a barbecue restaurant. We do have some unique items like fried green tomatoes. The chicken fried steak is going to be what we're really famous for. Look at all those dinners coming out of the window. I mean, this place is going off. I'm going to grab the bull by the horns and try a range of their southern specialties. I'll start with the Frito pie, get some deep fried tomatoes, a chicken fried steak, a brisket burger. Oh, and because my appetite is as big as the Lone Star State itself, I'll finish things off with their sampler plate. Billy Bob's! <laughs> At Billy Bob's, we have a challenge on our menu to try to finish a six-pound chicken fried steak sandwich in one hour. That's way too much meat for me. But I did wrestle up two guys who wanted to give it a try. When they say everything's bigger in Texas, I think this is what they're talking about. All right, boys, open your eyes and let the games begin. <laughs> we'll check back on these two in a little while and see how much their stomachs can stomach. <laughs> 12 times we've been voted Country Music and Nightclub of the Year. This is our guitar bar from George Strait to Willie Nelson. Merle Haggard. There's even a fiddle here from Charlie Daniels. Wow, it's like the Country Music Wall of Fame. Ringo Starr from a little band you may have heard of called The Beatles. Right here's the great Johnny Cash. That's the proper way to address Johnny Cash's hands. Check this out, signed petrified hamburger buns. You got Chris Isaac, the Beach Boys, Dwight Yoakam. They've all been here. All of them been here. <laughs> We're party like rock stars. <laughs> and if you don't know how to do the Texas two-step, no problem. At Billy Bob's, they'll teach you. Five, two, three, good turn. Round one, two. All right, did a good job. <laughs> I think I'll stick to cooking. Let's go back over to the restaurant. This is classic tailgating food. You got your corn chips, you got your chili, and you got your melted cheese. You get the saltiness of those chips, you get that nice meaty chili with the beans, and that cheese melted all over it. You can mess with Texas, but don't mess with my Frito pie. I really like their mashed potatoes. Had a really distinct taste. Fried green tomatoes, or maters as they call them here. It's a classic Southern specialty. The juiciness of those fried tomatoes and the crispiness of the seasoned batter, that's like the classic Texan two-step. This rodeo is as real as it gets, and it's right here inside the restaurant. What's tougher, Canadian bulls or Texan bulls? You know, my explanation would be very simple. The Canadian bulls are tougher on a plate with salt and pepper and ketchup oh. on them. Oh. That doesn't work up in our face. Nothing will. Sometimes when I'm riding one really good and about to win the whole rodeo, I can smell the steak cooking already. Time to check back in on our two contestants. Very impressive, very impressive. Once you have enough, it gets to you. Looks like the chicken fried steak wins! <laughs>
I got my own chicken fried steak, but this one's a slightly more manageable portion. Served up with mashed potatoes and gravy, some deep fried okra, and some Texas toast. Oh, that's a tender, juicy fried steak covered in a crispy crust. It's everything you love about fried chicken. Beautiful cut of meat, all rolled into one. I am eating the chopped brisket sandwich with barbecue sauce. I polish the thing off in like two minutes. Oh, look at this. Generous chunks of brisket smothered in a tangy barbecue sauce, served up on this toasted bun. It's tender, it's salty, it's smoky. It's got a beautiful barbecue flavor. I mean, this is a perfect sandwich, and that's no bull. Oh, yeah. Look at that. Their sampler plate. You can practically smell the mesquite wood rising from this plate. You got smoked chicken, smoked sausage with jalapeno, pulled pork, tater tots, smoky beans. This plate, a little bit of heaven, right here in Texas. Start with some down-home country cooking, add some real live bull riding and country and western music, throw about 5,000 people into the mix, and you got a big night out, Texan style. It's weird because you can ride a fake bull, you can go to a rodeo, you can dance. I mean, you can just get everything here. Yeah, what other restaurant in the world can you have your steak and ride it too? Yeah! Yeah!